this guy hit me up online, seen a video that I had put on YouTube. And uh, if you haven't seen that YouTube video, you should check it out. But anyway, I would just put it on there to try to uh, figure out this new video editing program that I got. And I had all years of snake footage put together, so I decided to release my finished product, put it on YouTube to see what would happen, and I've gotten several people to contact me since, including Garrett. So I was finally able to meet up with my buddy Nick Wren. Uh, about three years ago, I uh, got on the internet and I searched rattlesnake hunting in Oregon, and he had made a YouTube video. Uh, so I contacted him via email and said I was interested in getting together with him to, to hunt rattlesnakes here in eastern Oregon. Wanted to go out on a hunt and uh, I agreed, yeah, let's do this, you know. So he came into town. He lives about four hours from central Oregon. So when he got into town that day, I was supposed to take a three-day weekend and uh, I was going to be able to meet him out at the spot we had talked on Friday and I had to work late that day couldn't make it out so I called or text Garrett and told him that uh, there's no way I was gonna be able to make it because I got hung up at work and he said that's fine I'll, I know where you're going I'll meet you out there so we uh, headed out and me and my brother uh, headed over here um, Nick had some issues at work so he he couldn't make it right that day uh, so we uh, uh, went by ourselves. Nick told us where to go, and uh, so me and my brother we went and set up camp out in the desert outside Burns there, and uh, just waited for Nick. Well, the first day we got there, uh, we got there early, of course, and we set up camp and we went uh, shooting, hunting some rabbits, looking around. Um, we had proceeded to climb up this bluff and uh, go shoot rabbits and uh, did that for about an hour, came back down, walked down the same bluff, and my brother was a little tired, so he said, oh, I'm gonna take a nap. And I said, okay, well, you're gonna nap. I'm not gonna nap, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. So I sat there for a minute, had a beer, and decided, well, I'm gonna go shoot some more rabbits. So I grabbed my gun and uh, headed up the same bluff. It was about 30 feet behind the camp, and uh, headed up behind the bluff and, and uh, got about four feet from the top and I, I reached up with my right hand <clears throat> to pull myself up. I had my rifle in my left. Of course I reached up on top of the rock about that high and I heard a really quick buck sting on my hand. I knew immediately what had happened. Um, so of course my adrenaline's rushing so I, you know, fly back down this little hill and uh, sat on a rock and kind of pondered what the hell just happened. And I uh, was looking at my hand. There was only one hole in the side of this finger here. And um, I figured, well, I'll wait and see if it uh, was a dry bite or, or what happened. And I could squeeze it and you could see, you know, juice coming out, venom, whatever it was. And so I proceeded down in the, back into camp and told my brother that, uh, that I'd been bit. <laughs> and of course, his first question is, bit by one, an ant or what? And I said, no. I got bit by a rattlesnake. And of course he said, ah, BS, you know, we'd only been here for two hours. So I said, Randy, I'm not even, I'm not even kidding you. I got bit by a rattlesnake. And uh, after I showed him the hole, he was kind of, kind of starting to believe me. And then <clears throat> my hand started swelling up pretty good and, and uh, got this real strong metallic taste in my mouth, uh, which I know is venom. And so, uh, you know, he started to panic and, hey, we got we to gotta head for Burns, you know, we got to get out of here. So I said, okay, so we jumped in the truck, didn't really pack anything up but the rifles and headed toward Burns. And, you know, of course, I'm on the way, I'm trying to, I didn't know if Burns had antivenom or, you know, whether we needed to go to Bend or where we needed to go. So I get on my phone as he's driving 100 miles an hour down a gravel road. And I got a hold of uh, 911. And I uh, got a hold of some lady in uh, Lakeview, Oregon, from 911, who proceeded to hang up on me because really wasn't uh, in her area. Um, so I called back and got a hold of a guy and uh, told him what had happened. And he was also in Lakeview and uh, told me tonight, have a nice day, and also hung up on me. 
So I called 411 and got uh, the number to the Burns Hospital here and uh, asked them if they had antivenin. And they said, yeah, we deal with a lot of rattlesnake bites, so come here. And I said, okay. So we proceeded to, uh, to Burns. So, uh, so yeah, me and my brother are headed out. Uh, we get in the truck, and we're, we're headed for Burns, driving down the road. And I thought, well, I'm going to call Nick. So I got off work that day, went home, loaded up the Suburban, and was getting ready to head out. Um, at the last the gas station, right on your way out of town, I get this phone call. And uh, it's Garrett. So I answer the phone, and Garrett says, that's eh, not going so good, buddy. You just got bit by a rattlesnake. And so, now you're joking with me, right? No, I'm not joking. Um, I'm on my way to the Burns Hospital right now. So I grabbed my phone and uh, called Nick and I said, hey Nick, I found the rattlesnakes. And he says, you did? And I said, yeah, I did. Where'd you find them? I said, right behind camp, not too far. And he goes, oh yeah? And I said, yeah, just got bit. And Nick says, no, you didn't. Please don't tell me you got bit. And I said, yeah, yeah. I've only been there two hours and I already got bit by a rattlesnake and uh, walked in the hospital and immediately was put on a gurney and whisked down a hallway and into a room where there was probably 30 people in that room. And uh, I said, wow, I didn't know that rattlesnakes were that, you know, like a big deal around here. And she said, well, you know, unfortunately we give you this antivenom. We don't know whether you're allergic to it, whether you're going to go into cardiac arrest or, or what's going to happen. So we need people here that can take care of you if something does go wrong. All right, so they get put me on this uh, other bed and proceeded to put two vials of antivenom in my IV bag, and immediately it makes you sick. So I sit there and threw up for 10 minutes, and then um, after that they kind of you know they measure your arm um, and they they measure the the uh, the uh, swelling in your arm. They kind of track it. Well, and the doctor comes and he says, well, the swelling's not going down. I think you got a pretty good bite, so we're going to have to keep you for the night in ICU. So I was like, okay, well, whatever. I was so drugged up at that time, I didn't care what happened. So so they took me into the ICU, and I, I ended up uh, spending a night there, you know, and they got you hooked up to all these monitors and buzzers and cords going everywhere. And so, of course, you're not going to sleep all night, but... I learned a lot about <clears throat> anti-venom from the nurse, and uh, she was a great, you know, company all night, and and uh, talked, and you know, whatever. But uh, made it a, a fairly decent experience. So, anyway, one thing led to another. It just kept getting worse from there. Um, my suburban broke down on the way out to meet him, so I had to get it back to town, and. I wasn't able to finally meet him in person for the first time until the next day when he was in the hospital in Burns, Oregon, where uh, he was laying on a hospital bed with his arm raised up from the bite. Um, so anyway, so before that, uh, my brother <clears throat> didn't know really what to do because obviously they told him that that uh, uh, he, I was going to have to spend a night in a hospital and then he was you know, kind of pondering, well, what am I going to do? You know, he certainly didn't want to go back out and spend the night in the desert by himself after me getting bit by a rattlesnake 30 feet from camp. So we thought, well, I'm going to go back, I'm going to pack everything up, and uh, I'm going to head back, you know, Burns, get a hotel room. So my brother drives back out into the desert by himself because, remember, Nick is having car problems and couldn't make it, was going to come down the next day. <clears throat> so my brother drives into camp, <clears throat> And he's thinking to himself, why is our camp red? And, he, and we've got this awning covering the, the cots. And uh, he knew it was blue, but when he came driving up to it, it was solid red. And everything was red. Um, and he was like, I, don't, I don't really don't know if we're in hell or, or what's going on here. But, uh, so he drives up, and uh, you know, he starts taking everything apart. Um, and of course, you know, he's freaked out thinking there's rattlesnake got to be real close and so all of a sudden he feels these stinging in his chest and on his back and immediately he starts freaking out thinking that it's a rattlesnake so he's taking a shovel and he's beating the sleeping bags and beating everything around the camp thinking that there's got to be rattlesnakes and uh, what had happened was there was some type of uh, red ant hatch and uh, the red he was seeing was millions of little red ants uh, that all had wings and what they were is they were dropping off the canopy 
and landing on him and then going down his shirt and they were stinging him everywhere. And so um, he was freaked out so he runs away from camp and he gets out about 50 yards and he calls his wife Nancy and he says, I don't know what the hell I'm in, I don't know where I'm at, but he goes, I think I stepped into hell. He goes, he goes Garrett's in the hospital with a snake bite, I come back to get everything, I'm being bit by red ants. And Nancy said, just leave everything there. I don't don't get nothing and just get in your truck and leave. Just leave everything. Leave the whole camp. Just leave. And Randy says, Well, most of the stuff is Garrett's, you know. And she says, I don't I don't give a damn. Just get out of there. We'll pay him for what you left. Just get out of there. So Randy uh, decides, well, you know, he's so he's brushing off all the ants and they're biting his legs and he's pretty much just grabbing stuff and throwing in the back of his truck um so he finally gets everything uh packed up you know and back in the truck and he heads into burns and and uh you know comes comes back to the hospital and uh sees me hooked up to the iv of course and got all these things hooked up to me and and uh, uh kind of realized it was kind of a serious deal uh you know it's kind of a weird deal that you know, some of my brothers have been bit, bit by rattlesnakes, but, you know, we've been kind of hunting them for a long time, and we do a lot of hunting. We're in the outdoors a lot, so things happen, um, you know, but uh, but this was uh, one for the ages. But uh, So after three years, uh, me and Nick finally reconnected. Um, took me a little while probably to get over that, but uh, got a hold of him. This was going to be a weekend. He was going to come out anyway, Fourth of July weekend. So uh, uh, drove over uh, yesterday. We, he decided he still wanted to do this and meet up for a hunt so we could you know, get some footage of these snakes and whatnot. And it's been three years now and we finally get to go after he's healed up and we were able to make ends meet. Um, we're heading out today and we're gonna find some rattlesnakes so we can do what we planned to do three years ago, but he got bit so we weren't able to do it. So anyway, let's check it out. Finally, after three years, Garrett and I get a chance to actually do this. We're out here in eastern Oregon, and it's a beautiful summer day. We're going to go up on the south-facing ridge right here and see if we can find a few rattlesnakes. Come enjoy the show. In eastern Oregon, Great Basin rattlesnakes are primarily found during the summer months of June, July, and August. I typically look for them along south facing edges of rims and rocky cliffs. I use two different tools, a snake tongue for retrieving the snake from a safe distance and a crowbar for both lifting rocks as well as tapping along the cliff edge. Usually the snakes react to the vibrations caused by the tapping by shaking their tails and warning to keep away. Occasionally I'll harvest what I would consider to be a trophy snake, but that would be 40 plus inches by my standards. Because snakes that size in the desert are few and far between, taking one isn't often. The big ones have enough meat for a tasty meal and are large enough to make accessories such as hat bands, belts, guitar straps, wallets, etc. Why is that? Because when they bite you, it feels like you got shot with a bullet. Wow. The only requirement in Oregon is to possess a valid hunting license. Wow. There's our trusty cameraman, Henry. Oh, we got one. You see him? Big one, too. Nice snake. Right there by that grass. Oh, yeah. Nice snake. I like it. It's got a beautiful rattle on it. That's a big snake. Sometimes you'll get lucky and spot a snake before it sees you. 
Usually they're either lounging in the shade of a rock or lying on top sunning themselves depending on the temperature and time of day. Seeing them first gives you the upper hand. You can sneak in quietly and grapple them before they can retreat into cracks and crevices between the rocks. so he can't go down anymore. And then we'll get out there another 10, 15 feet. We'll come back after these others. That's a pretty good sized one, dude. That's a hot snake there. That's a good looking snake. Yeah, it's a good size one. Keep an eye on him. In the first 45 minutes of our expedition, we'd already found three snakes. I knew it was going to be a good day because it was the middle of the season, the temperature was hot, and I know where to find them. More often than not, the snakes will see you before you see them and quickly retreat under the cover of the surrounding rocks. In this case, a little more effort is required to get these snakes out to confirm size. This is where the crowbar comes in handy. Being acutely aware of where the snake is at all times, you can strategically maneuver the crowbar into position. You can pry or lift the rocks while your partner moves in with the tongs. Once I've retrieved the snake, I quickly move it away from the cliff edge and rock so I can take a minute or two to examine the snake. With nothing nearby to hide under, I have ample time for staging to take photos and get a real feel for its size and beauty. There are two subspecies of western rattlesnakes native to Oregon. The northern Pacific rattlesnake, which is mainly found west of the Cascade mountain range, and the Great Basin rattlesnake, which is found on the east side of the Cascades, but the majority are in the southeastern part of the state. 
The average size range of a western rattlesnake is 18 inches to 36 inches at maturity, but occasionally they can reach lengths of 4 feet and in very rare cases up to 5 feet in length. Oh, that's what I see. Big though. God. Bring him out here so we can get a look at him. Dude, I don't think this is him. Look at the color of him. Stand right over here. Up this one? Yeah. Move him up here. Look how light he is. Yeah. Ooh. He's got a big, he's got a big rattle. Dinger, let's see this. See. What I've seen. Bring him over here a little way so he don't go underneath the rock. Bring him out in the open. Out here? Yeah. Very, very light snake. But I thought he was so big because I've seen this. And what you got here is probably his shed that was just recent. And you can tell. God dang it. You can tell because he's got such good color that he's uh and you look at his eyes see how brilliant yellow they are that means he just shed man That's that is so pissed. yeah <laughs> he's he's a hot snake he's so and sensitive. yeah look at his tongue i mean he is this guy's face is different than the other ones you look at this one's face i mean he is definitely upset look at his tongue well, he is not happy at all. <laughs> what a beautiful snake that is, man. That is, that is a, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa did you get fair. that? I think so. I mean, I was nowhere near him. Right, still. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got me. I mean, that is a hot snake, man. Yeah, he's <laughs> Boy, look at his tongue go, boy. He's sensing me. Jeez. He's got about the same color as your boot, you know that? It was hissing too. Oh yeah. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Look at him. Those other two. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Look at that boy, he's ready. Right now, he's sizing me up. He's like, that dude, ooh, oh yeah, ooh, that was a fake strike there. <laughs> yeah. That dude gets any closer. He's got something for me. See that? Crazy, huh? He don't like me at all. <laughs> nice. nice, man. There's what a lot a of snakes snake. out. We just got into three right here. And we lost two. Look at that. Three under oh. one rock. Stay back. A few more feet, then there was two more. A den close by. Contrary to popular belief, the number of rattles doesn't reflect the age of the snake. Man, there are rattlesnakes everywhere today. A rattlesnake gets a new rattle each time it sheds its skin. This can be up to five times in its first summer and one to three times every year after. But that depends on how fast the snake grows due to available food and shelter. Also, the entire string of rattles does not always stay intact. They often get broken due to the harsh environment they live in. Studies have shown the estimated lifespan of a western rattlesnake is between 16 and 20 years.
so far we've got quite a bit of activity, got a lot of good footage. I'm almost thinking maybe we should head back to the car and re relocate. You know, there's a couple other places I want to show you guys. Let's find one more. One more and then we'll head back? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to find one more. One more. And we're turning her around. Yep, go back. Remember, I put this rock here because we couldn't remember which side it was, he was on. He wanted that rock on the right hand side. As you can see in this shot, the Great Basin Rattlesnake's camouflage and size make it perfect for disappearing into the surrounding landscape, making it nearly impossible to see it with the naked eye. down in there didn't he? That's right. I got a good shot of him. Do you right now? You no, I, I said I did get a good shot of him. Careful man. We're gonna head over to the other side of this valley that we're at here. There's some shady trees. Fire up the barbecue and have us a few brats. Yeah. I started coming out here when I was about 16 years old. One of my best childhood friends and I met the old timer who owned the cafe and gas station about 15 miles from here. In those days, he held a rattlesnake contest every summer, giving prizes to the three largest Great Basin rattlesnakes of the season. He told us of a south-facing ridge line to find snakes, and not far from there, we found a great place to camp. Small as we can, we'll throw it away. Uh -huh. So, I was like, so I go down there by myself. After my first summer of going after rattlesnakes and coming close but never winning any prizes, I was hooked, and I've been coming here ever since. Probably the main reason I do this is not necessarily for seeing the rattlesnakes, but an excuse to get out and enjoy the beauty and splendor of Mother Nature and enjoy the camaraderie of good friends. After lunch, we hit it hard again, taking advantage of the slightly cooler temperatures of the afternoon. Again, picking a south-facing ridge line, we grabbed our gear and headed west in hopes that a trophy rattler was not far ahead. And just like that, we were back in them. Oh, 
hit. And he is not happy. Get in a position because somebody's The hollow fangs of a rattlesnake are used to inject their venom in order to stun or kill their prey. Out here, their diet consists mainly of kangaroo rats, baby rabbits, and sometimes lizards. Rattlesnakes shed and replace their fangs every couple of months, but never at the same time. They always have at least one fang to defend themselves and subdue their prey, and they will only be without two fangs for a few days. Textbooks will tell you that rattlesnakes can only strike a third to a half of their own body length, but I have personally witnessed one striking three quarters of its length. Most of the time, they will only strike when cornered. A snake bite can be a very expensive trip to the hospital. Everyone is different, but in Garrett's case, he had to have eight vials of antivenom at $3,000 a piece. So always be aware of your surroundings and be safe when you're in snake country because you never know where you're gonna find snakes on a plane. Thanks for coming out today, Garrett. That was a fun snake hunt. We Absolutely. saw like somewhere between 18 and 20 different rattlesnakes of all different sizes. Um, unfortunately, we didn't see anything big enough that I would consider big enough to harvest, but that's part of the hunt. You just never know. We did actually see a few babies. Um, yep. Garrett had never seen any, and we saw two babies, and that was his first yep. time seeing them. They that's were great. only about, I don't know, eight inches long probably. But uh, other than that, we had a great time. Absolutely. And Garrett, thanks for coming out. I'm yep. glad everything worked out this time. Yeah, we were able to absolutely. make it. Absolutely. Had a great time. So until next time, man, take care. Thank you. Uh huh. And if you Thanks. think you got what it takes, contact Sergeant Rim Productions and we'll book a trip for you.
I said, I don't know, let's, I don't know, drag it up here and we'll bend it up into as small as we can and we'll throw it away. Uh-huh. So I was like, so I go down there by myself and uh, what was weird, it, you know, it had four legs, obviously. Uh-huh. Two of them were on the bank and then two of them were in the air. Okay. And as soon as I grabbed a hold of one of the legs and pulled on it, it was almost like it was, it was a spring. Cause, cause the way it was bent uh-huh. and the way it was laying, as soon as I pulled on it, the two front legs went like that. And I'm not even shitting you. At the last second, I seen this leg coming at me, uh, and yeah. I turned my head, and that thing hit me right here in no the side shit. of the fucking head, split my ear. You can oh still see God. the notch. Holy it split shit, my dude. ear wide open. Oh, wow. And I didn't even know, and it actually cut the back of my head too. And if I wouldn't have turned my head, it hit oh, me yeah. right here. Like, I mean, it was coming like that, and I went, oh, my God. And it went, whap. And they were, you know, they were sitting up here, and they yeah. were like, are you all right? And I'm like, yeah, that damn thing pissed me off, you know. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, Carrie's like, get it! And I'm like, what? And I look down, and my whole arm is red. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like that. And, and then I'm like that. Nancy goes, Garrett, your ear's cut off. And I'm like, what? And we went up there, and I'm like, oh, my God. It was cut, seriously, like an yeah, inch oh down. And Nancy's like, you need to go over. You need to go to the hospital. Yeah, it was like split. She's like, we're taking you to the hospital. What? I said, I promise you, I am what? not going to the hospital. So Bruce tried taping it and shit, and uh, it didn't work. And I said, and then I remember I had some uh, some jet ski. Uh, I said, Bruce, we're gonna do this. So I had him, I had him hold my ear together, and I put a line of super glue right here and uh-huh. on the backside. And honestly, you never got stitches? Nope. <laughs> wow. Nope. And you can, I mean, you can, you can see the notch, but it healed up really Holy nice. Yeah. It healed up, cool. <laughs> But man, if I wouldn't have turned my head, see, because the leg, the leg was broken, uh-huh. you know, because it basically just bent it, and so we were, t- I was trying to like, that's weird. What happened? I don't know. It was like a spring, man. It was yeah. like Destination Five or something. <laughs> and as soon as I grabbed the leg and pulled on it, it just went, whoo! Wow. And I'm telling you, man, if I hadn't turned my head, it would hit me right yeah. here somewhere, and it would have fucking cut my nose off. I mean, I would have been having a reconstructive surgery. Right. Cause it, I mean, it hit me so hard. Cause what was it again? It was the leg of you know that the blue things with the top on them. Canopy. Can- and the canopy oh, like things. Gazebo, yeah. Well, yeah. the wind came up so so hard, and it was bolted to the ground. It just destroyed it. It just oh, it crumpled it to the ground because it was it acted like a big uh, parachute. Oh right, yeah. yeah. And the wind was blowing so hard, people's tents were blowing away. <laughs> people that you know up in that campground. Yeah. Because we were in the you know where all the RV is. Yeah. I was watching people's tents roll down the river. I mean, it, the wind yeah. was howling. Yeah, that same place where we came from, yeah. that post storm. I mean, the next day it was gusty. And I stayed back to camp. The other guys were out fishing or planning or something. I'm sitting in a chair, and we had one of those things. And I just thought, just kind of pick up a little bit and just start rolling. And it was gone. It rolled probably a good half mile, and then I lost sight of it. <laughs> what was it? Oh, one of those gazebos? Yeah, yeah but I was already. <laughs> pretty fucking toasted by then so i was sitting there just watching it <laughs> and they came back what happened to the fucking canopy blew away <laughs> <laughs> <It's gone. laughs> there's no way i would have cut that fucking thing once it started going 